my name is Jackie Crosser. I'm a physical therapy student at Elon University. And in this short video, I'm going to talk to you about biofeedback. First, I want to talk to you about why you might want to use biofeedback in the clinic. And then I'm going to actually demonstrate using biofeedback on a patient while they're performing an exercise. And then I just want to talk a little bit about uh, what types of patients you might like to use biofeedback on. So first, in discussing why to use biofeedback, um, I wanted to summarize an article that I read that I found helpful in kind of showing some of the benefits of biofeedback. And I'm going to reference this article at the end um, in case you would like to read it yourself. So um, this, this study was done with 16 participants, um, eight in, in each group. There was a control group and an experimental group. Um, all 16 participants underwent ACL reconstruction surgery with patellar tendon autograft. Um, all 16 participants had the same surgeon and the same amount of physical therapy using the same protocol. The only difference between the groups was the control group did not have biofeedback during their session and the experimental group used biofeedback during the strengthening um, portion of their physical therapy. So some of the outcome measures they tested, and they, and they did all the outcome measures at one week pre-operation, and then one weeks one, two, four, and six post-op. Um, so the, the measures they took were, were um, for swelling and edema and pain. And swelling, edema, and pain were the same between both groups. There was no improvement using biofeedback. So essentially biofeedback doesn't help with the healing process. Um, and that's kind of what, what we would expect. Uh, the other measures, however, um, there were some differences between the two groups. One measurement was asking the, the patients if they had experienced any knee buckling or giving way and how many times they experienced that the week before. Um, in weeks one and two post-op, the patients using the biofeedback had improved scores, but then at the end, both groups um, evened out and they were on the same level with that, with that outcome. Um, and the other outcome measures used were um, passive knee extension, um, and passive knee extension was significantly improved at the end, at week six, for the group using biofeedback. And um, then they also took a measurement of integrated EMG um, to see the, the muscle firing for the vastus medialis muscle in both groups, and the biofeedback group was significantly improved at the end of the six weeks. So with, the, with that little bit of information, I think that it's, um, to me, it kind of shows the benefits of using the biofeedback um, and that you can, even though the study didn't show long-term or, you know, if the, if the patients had more therapy, you know, what the outcomes were at the end, just that beginning six weeks and kind of showing that there was significant improvement using the biofeedback um, more so than the group that didn't, I think is a good reason to use biofeedback. Now I would like to show you a demonstration of how to use it in the clinic. The good thing about biofeedback is it's really easy to apply to really any exercise. So I'm going to have this patient demonstrate doing a short arc quad set um, with the biofeedback. So these are the electrodes, and we only need to use one electrode because um, we're going to emphasize the vastus medialis muscle on this patient. So I'm just going to, and before I apply the electrode, you want to make sure there's no nothing to impede the signal. So you want to make sure there's no hair or oil. So you might need a little bit of alcohol. You might need to have some disposable razors to shave if there's any uh, a patient with a lot of hair. So I'm just going to have the patient do a short arc quad and find the muscle. Okay, and you can relax. I'm just going to put the 
electrode right on the muscle that I'm trying to get the signal from. And there's a lot of different biofeedback, biofeedback machines. This is one example. It's pretty simple. You just hook the, um, the thing that attaches to the electrode into the machine, attach it onto the electrode. Um, and then you just turn the machine on. And it's really as simple as that. Now the machine's kind of ramping up. Once it beeps, now the, um, it tells you the current, current session is starting. And it will give you the signal from the muscle. So I'm going to have you, Gabby, go ahead and elevate your leg and try to do a maximum contraction and relax. And can you do that 10 times for me? So I can look at this and see how much she's contracting or I can show it to her and she can try to get the contraction to be higher and higher and just as high as she can. And you can use this in your sessions to track the patient's progress and to help them see their own progress. Okay, so now that you see how easy it is to apply and use biofeedback, and you can use it on any muscle you're trying to strengthen, um, I just want to go back over um, one other little piece of information about the study. The participants, 95% of the participants were had to get the ACL reconstruction after a sports-related trauma. So to me, this kind of shows that due to the fact that the, um, the population was very active, they're also very motivated to get active again. So the fact that the biofeedback had an impact on this already motivated population kind of gives you an idea of of how powerful it can be for some people. On the flip side, I want to mention that some people might be a little confused or overwhelmed by the technology and they might not be numbers people or it just it might confuse them if they're not really familiar with things like that. So you want to just think about your patient and weigh in you know whether this will be beneficial for them or not. So I hope you got some good information out of this video. Thank you very much for watching.